Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an inlay for letters or any other type of shape so you have one part that easily fits into another. This is a great method to use if you want to have a multicolored print but either don't have a multicolored printer or don't want to do a filament swap. It allows you to print the parts separately and gives you the ability to slot them into place without the need for any post processing such as sanding or glue. Now before we get started I'm just going to set the scene properties in terms of what type of units we're going to be using. So uh, if you're going to be following along this tutorial, you will have to set these just so everything works the same. <laughs> so we're going to set this to 0 0.001 and we're going to change the length to millimeters. And then we're going to change our scale to 0 0.001. So once that's done, everything is going to be in millimeters, which will have an effect on some of the modifiers that we're going to be using. So the first thing we need to do is raise this base up a bit because I think it's a bit too shallow for us to put letters into. So we're just going to go into top mode, into face select and use the box select tool to select all the faces, G and Z, and we're going to raise that up a bit. So we've raised up this base so we have a little bit more wiggle room with the depth of the cutout. And now we're going to add in the text I uh, don't really like this text, so we're going to change it up. And we're going to use Bookman Old Style. I think this looks quite nice. And then type in Just. Now, before you go to creating this into a 3D model, we need to create a bit of gap between these letters because they're too close to each other, and that is going to cause issues when we print it. So we're going to hold Alt and then right arrow uh, four times. Okay, so now these guys have a bit of distance and they're not going to hit each other. And once you have it in a position that you like, then we can move on to converting it to a mesh so we can start turning it 3D. So that's object, convert to, and mesh. So now the text is converted to a mesh. If we enter into edit mode, you'll see that there is a whole bunch of topology here that is going to make our life very painful in the long run if we don't fix it. So we're going to select all the text, go to mesh, clean up and limited dissolve. And it should generally clean it up pretty good without needing to touch anything. So now our text is ready for the third dimension. We're going to go to modify and then solidify. And then we're going to extend that out. So once we've extended the text, we can hit apply and that is locked in for the geometry. Okay, so this next step is going to take you a couple of tries to do because the settings you choose depends on your printer, your filament, how well you've calibrated your printer and a whole bunch of other things. So just be prepared to have to redo this step a few times. So. Before you proceed any further, I would make a save of this version and uh, revert back to it when you need to, to adjust things. So we're going to be adding a modifier, solidify again. And basically what we're going to be doing is making a duplicate copy of this word. So we're going to leave the offset as minus one and we're going to take this down to 15. So as you can see, as I'm doing that, it's making the edges bigger, not the, not the actual size of the letters, just the edges. So if I was to use the scale tool, you'll see that it's just scaling everything. And this method will not give you what you're looking for. All we want is to scale these edges in or out. And that's exactly what this tool does. So now after many prints and attempts at doing this, I know that 0 0.015 is the perfect thickness. So once we've got our thickness in, we can hit apply. And then we're going to head to edit mode, vertice selection, and you're going to select one vertice from each letter. And then you're going to hit control L and that's going to select all the vertices that are linked to that letter. You want to make sure all these are highlighted. If they're kind of hidden away, then it means you've selected the letter underneath. And now what we're going to do is separate the two words from each other with G and Z. 
and you'll see that there is a copy underneath. So the one that I have right now is the one we're going to be using for the cutout because you can see it's the edges are a little bit bigger than that one underneath. So we're just going to move that guy up here and we're going to press P and then separate by selection. And that's going to turn this into its own object so we can control them separately. So I'm going to move this up here and I'm going to move this down here into our object. Now this step you have to be careful because you don't want to push this word too far down because then the letters will start showing through the base. But you also don't want to have it too far up because then there's not going to be anything for the letter to recess into. So I think around about there is pretty good. So now we have our cutout letters placed. There's something we still need to do to our printing letters. So what we're going to do now is create a little bevel on all these letters so they slot in a little bit easier and make our assembly process much more pleasant. But I'm going to show you what may happen if you have some weird topology still on your letters and I'll show you how to fix it. Into wireframe mode, we're going to select all these bottom edges and then we're going to press control B for bevel. Okay, so you can see that there's a bit of strangeness going on with this beveling and that is because there is some weird topology that is causing it to wig out. <laughs> the two or three things that are causing this are these lines here. So all we're going to do is go and delete these edges. You can see there's two on top or three on top of each other, which is not what we want. Now those weird edges are gone. So we're going to hit Alt Shift to select the entire outline of the edge and hit F to fill these in. And hit F. So if we go back and select all of these edges and do the bevel, we should see that there, we are getting those weird artifacts as much, just as long as we don't push it too far push it up there then it's gonna happen but we don't need to just push it up a little bit just like that and then use your middle mouse scrolling wheel to round it off so all of our letters have a nice round edge these may look pretty extreme but when you print them uh, depending on your printer they may even print straight <laughs> depending on how much elephant's foot you have but I think it's always a good idea to round them off regardless of how good or bad your printer is because it will make a pretty good difference in assembly. So we've got our printable letters set up now we're going to start the cutout so we're going to click on the base model go to modify boolean and then we're going to use the eyedropper tool to select these letters and then we're going to select the letters and hide them. Now the boolean pretty much always has issues. <laughs> if you see random shapes disappearing or appearing, then don't worry because all you have to do is click self intersection and it will fix itself. And if that doesn't happen, then you can just change it from exact to fast and hopefully that should do the job. So once this is done, you'll probably have to reprint this part a bunch of times just to test the tolerance for the letters. So when you do that, um, an easy way to just select a small snippet in Blender. We're going to go and add a mesh, add a cube. We're going to duplicate that. So once we have our second square in place, we can join them together. Select the base model. Apply the boolean from before because that's good to go. And then add another boolean and select these squares that we've just placed and then hide them off. So this is gonna allow you to print a much smaller part of the model without having to waste all this time and filament printing the rest of it when you don't need it, just for testing. Okay, so let's say that the letters fit perfectly, you're very happy with everything. All you have to do is remove this boolean from before and you're pretty much good to go. So now it's time to have a look at the final product. So here is the final product. As you can see, the parts fit in perfectly and it's all looking good. Hopefully this video has helped and I'll see you in the next one.